Hey everybody. So I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, late Friday night, they put out a press release. So November 25th, and I'll read the just the updated part of it. Um, so it says that there have been numerous media inquiries about the 1999 double stabbing in Pullman, Washington and the 2021 double stabbing with one death in Salem, Oregon. While these cases share similarities with the King Street homicides, there does not appear to be any evidence to support the cases are related. And then community members have uploaded over 260 digital media submissions to the FBI link. To date, 113 pieces of physical evidence have been collected and sent to the Idaho State Police Crime Lab for processing and analysis. Governor Brad Little has directed up to 1 million in state emergency funds for ongoing investigation. And that's uh, just basically a reminder, I'd say, the University of Idaho is hosting a candlelight visual for Wednesday, November 30th to honor the memory of Ethan, Santa, Madison, and Kaylee. And we're gonna check out these uh, websites here. The U University of Idaho has established a Vandal Family uh, Support Resource page for their students. And then detectives are looking for tips. And then also, still at this time, no suspect has been identified and only vetted information that does not hinder the investigation will be released to the public. There is speculation without factual backing, stoking community fears and spreading false facts. We encourage referencing official releases for accurate information and updated progress. All press releases can be found at this website. And the other update that is given besides basically the main one of the other stabbings not seeming to be related to this one is that they have changed the time for Kaylee and Madison when they returned home. So we've heard Kaylee's sister talk about how it was not 145 when they got to the house. And it does appear that finally they have changed the time. So it says at the very bottom here that they got a ride home from downtown to arrive at their King Road residence around 1.46 a.m. Arrival time has been updated based on digital evidence collected by investigators. So it may have been that they, I guess, were waiting for that the actual digital evidence to show before changing it, rather than just going off of what the sister had said. I don't know if it's that or if it was just easier to say 145. I don't, I don't know. But Regardless, it's a good thing to be as accurate as possible. So that has been updated now. And then everything else on here is the same information as it has been, right? It's all the same information. Uh, I'm going to have this linked in the description. So if you want to take a look at it, you'll be able to get it there. And then I'm also going to bring you over to the remembrance page that's through the University of Idaho, and we'll skim through that real quick here. So it says, in remembrance for University of Idaho students, Ethan, Zana, Madison, and Kaylee were killed in a homicide that took place off campus November 13th. Since then, Vandal family members and many others have expressed a desire to show and get or give support. Your thoughts, prayers, and concerns for the victims, their families, and our campus community are greatly appreciated. And then it says the candlelight visual is planned for Wednesday, November 30th to honor the memory of Ethan, Santa, Madison, and Kaylee. There are two ways to participate. One is going to be in Moscow, in Idaho, where you could be um, at the university. We'll host it at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Or you could do Boise, Idaho. The U of I, Boise, will host it at 6 p.m. Mountain time, right? And then anybody else that wants to do anything that can light a candle, turn on stadium lights, hold a moment of silence. And then you could put it at hashtag Vandal Strong or mention at U, uh, U Idaho. And then also, if you want to support the victims' families, there's the GoFundMe is here. Kaylee and Madison's are a joint GoFundMe. 
you'll be able to get to these by the link, this link I will drop in the description. There is a memorial scholarship set up in Ethan's name that donations are welcome. There is a student crisis support that uh, is also um, the funds provide financial assistance to U of I students who are experiencing emergency situations and has been activated to assist students in the past few days. And so if you wish to support current students during the crisis, um, you could do so through this, which is the Bruce and Kathy Pittman Emergency Fund. And then for solidarity, you can add a image or profile frame to your social media. And so you could download any of these here and you'll be able to get to it through the link here once I um, add it to the description. And then there's also memorial images that um, there was a spontaneous memorial set up at the entrance of the campus and they have photos of that as well. And then there was also a video done here that was put out that's a message from the president, uh, President Green, that is for the four of them. And um, I will, like I said, drop the link for you and you will be able to watch that as well. And then I'm also gonna show you something from Twitter, uh, Chanley, she works with Court TV. Um, she put up this that's from the Moscow police. And it says that at this time, investigators continue collecting evidence and reviewing facts from the case to develop a broader picture of what occurred. There are no specific updates at this time. Now, it does give some interesting information in here. I will uh, update you as the reporter asks the question and you can't really hear it. I'll stop it and tell you what they said. At this point in time, we have no persons of interest identified. Um, ultimately, we want to identify someone and we want to make an arrest and that's every effort is being put towards that. There's an overwhelming desire to figure out what occurred and to help, help law enforcement and to have a suspect so there can be justice. We're still continuing to investigate and to uh, interview people that may have information. Uh, we're looking for suspect information and uh, we're hoping that you know, ultimately we can identify a suspect and then we can make an arrest. You know what? We have not narrowed anything down uh, for one person or persons. Um, really what we're trying to do is take this uh, broad approach to it. Um, really we feel that based on the evidence that we currently have and the facts that we have, you know, narrowing anything down might put us down a rabbit hole and would we miss the bigger picture. Um, based on the information from the scene, the facts uh, that we know, you know, the autopsy report, those types of things, you know, we really still do believe that it was a targeted event. Do you guys have a point of entry for this woman? So at this point, uh, that's not information that uh, we're going to provide. What I can say is that it doesn't appear that there was any forced entry into this home on the night of the incident. So it could have been my mom. Potentially. Like someone that maybe knew these victims. Or... She asked if there a point of entry into the home. And then he said, I'm not going to give you that information. But I can tell you that the... Um, um, wow, how am I forgetting right now? He said that uh, he can say that there was not forced entry. And then she says, so it's somebody that they know. And he said, well, we, we don't know that yet, right? And then um, they're on to the next here. I'll go back a little bit. These victims, are, is it someone who didn't know them? So we're not sure. And uh, we really haven't narrowed that down. But, you know, it is factual that there is somebody out there somewhere in somebody's community, maybe in this community, you know, that has murdered four people. And we want to find out who that is. We want to identify that person. We want to bring them to justice. Um, no matter what, you know, I think people need to be vigilant as they're out and about and, and recognize that there's potential dangers out there. Um, that's unfortunately society today. Can you say if there were bloody shoe prints left behind? So that's all part of the investigation. That I... Can you say if there's bloody shoe prints left behind? And he said that's all part of the investigation. That was his answer to that one. The Idaho State Police Crime Lab was at the location for several days looking at all sorts of different things. And so as that evidence is collected, it will be processed and as quickly as possible that will be provided back to the detectives. That way they can, can continue their investigation. I will say one thing, uh, the, the scientists and the experts at the crime lab, they are working 24-7 on this case. This is important. This is important to the state. It's important to this community. Yeah.
Right. And so that was um, just a portion of what he said. With there's, I guess that's part one. I don't know um, when the rest of it's going to come out or if there's going to be a full thing. I, I have no idea. Maybe it was on Court TV. But, um, and then also there was this that came out that is about detectives and FBI returning to campus stabbing scene, uh, collect evidence and meet with prosecutor. So um, I would, I can actually show you here. Let me mute that and let it play through a little bit. And it says that investigators returned to the home and they met up with the prosecutor inside of the police headquarters after sundown. Aaron Snell, I think is how you would say his name, the communication director for the Idaho State Police, told Fox News Digital um, and downplayed the significance of the late meeting and said investigators have been routine, routinely putting in a long efforts. And let's just come up here. Let me pause this. I'll show you guys this at the end of them uh, looking around and, and going into the home. <clears throat> but, um, and he said that the, uh, quote, the DA has put, has been present throughout as a resource, he said, and we continue to work after hours. The DA has been here daily. Uh, that it included Thursday, which was Thanksgiving, when the prosecuting attorney, Bill Thompson, returned to the police department around two and left about 10 minutes later. This is, these are actually some of the pictures of the video that you're going to watch. So this is go, them going like in. Uh, on Friday, he was inside with investigators, including several who had returned to the house earlier in the day for about an hour. In the late afternoon Friday, police and members of the FBI first looked outside, walked up the hill behind the home, which is built into a slope and stands three stories tall. Next, they came back down and were seen putting on protective covers over their shoes, returned inside the home, and the home hadn't been touched for days according to the deputy that was standing guard Thursday morning. And then <clears throat> it says that, quote, we worked through the holiday, Snell said in an interview at the Moscow police headquarters Friday, uh, this is a nonstop investigation and we'll continue to move forward. At the same time, investigators were revisiting the home. This is them up in the upstairs bedroom, right? It happens at the end of the video. Uh, they were seen searching an upstairs bedroom and looking just inside the front door on the bottom floor. Two roommates on the ground level and a pet dog were unharmed in the attack. After searching the inside of the house, one of the investigators left with several small paper bags in his hand. Detectives continue investigating and will collect evidence, Snell said. However, he added that he did not have details about what authorities removed specifically from the scene Friday afternoon. Fox News contributor and a former Washington, D.C. homicide detective, Ted Williams, said he thinks police returned to the scene after determining the killer, killer came and went through the sliding glass door at the rear of the home. Quote, remember the two surviving witnesses slept on the first floor, so it's highly unlikely that the killer or killers came or went through the front door, he said. Snell said investigators were taking all possibilities seriously in order to avoid tunnel vision. The people that are working this case from all three agencies, they're the best and the brightest, and they have the most up-to-date resources, he said. Investigators were looking at all possibilities 12, 12 days after the attack, according to authorities who spent Thanksgiving Day analyzing evidence and conducting interviews. And most of the students had left town for Thanksgiving holiday, but University of Idaho President Scott Green has said that all students will have the option to finish a semester remotely. Still said, if the suspect turns out to be a student who doesn't plan on returning, that won't hinder the investigation. Quote, we're going to continue this investigation no matter what, he said. That's going to be putting together the various pieces and ultimately coming up with the suspect or suspects and then making that arrest. And police have not identified the suspect or recovered the murder weapon, believed to be a fixed blade knife. And whether or not that person is here on campus, in their room, online, or wherever in the community, we're going to make that arrest, he said. 
police said that they have already ruled out, right? All of the people that we already know have been ruled out. And they believe that the attack was targeted. <clears throat> They're still asking the public for info and surveillance video. And they're also looking into the claim about Kaylee having a stalker. Anyone with information on that topic is also asked to reach out to police, no matter how small the details may be. We continue looking into the stalker issue and are asking for any information from the public on the topic. Anyone with information on the stalker or the case in general is asked to call the tip line. And the number as well as the tip line site is all going to be in this article that will be in the description. But I'll bring you up and I'll show you the video right quick of them looking around. All right. So that's um, what they showed of it. And so, I mean, it's good that they were out there um, Friday and we're getting more evidence, right? We don't know obviously what, but if it's just a small bag, I'm thinking it's possible some of the forensic stuff starting to come back and maybe there's a specific area or areas in the home that they were asked to focus on to get more samples, you know, to, to be able to test for certain locations. And uh, I don't know, that's just a thought. I have no idea. But um, so that's good to see them working. And, um, you know, we will do the, um, the candlelight uh, vigil. I will cover it as long as there is a stream that's running the the candlelight I will um I'll cover it for you guys and you'll be able to see it and the two new um pieces of information were just that they don't believe that the other stabbings in 99 or 2021 have any relation to this case and that they changed the time for when the girls got back to 1 56 a.m instead of 1 45 so that's new but like i said i'm going to drop all the links and then if you want to check out the vandal strong um in remembrance video or any of the um images or 
the photos, any of that, you'll be able to take a look at it. But yeah, so that's just a little update for Friday. And I will update you as anything else comes in. And I hope that you all are having a good one. I'll talk to you very, very soon.